Hello children. Let us continue with the endocrine system. Last time we finished with the thyroid gland. Okay, we completed the thyroid gland. And today we will be moving on. And today we will be doing the adrenal gland. Now this is the adrenal gland. Okay. Over here you can see the two red ones. These are the kidneys. And on top of the kidneys, white, white patches over here. Okay. These are the adrenal glands. Okay. Adrenal meaning. Ad means near. Renal means kidney. Anything doing with the kidney. Renal. So adrenal near the kidneys. So they are called adrenal glands. Okay. This is how they look. Adrenal gland. The kidney is here and on top of the kidney you can see the adrenal gland. Now when a cross section, okay, when it is cut, the adrenal gland, this is how it looks. It has an outer region, the periphery which is called the cortex and inside is, it is like this and that is called the medulla. Now the cortex and the medulla they produce different hormones. Now the adrenal gland, the cortex secretes many hormones, but the most well-known one is cortisone. Okay? The cortisone, are also called the cortical hormones, they influence the carbohydrate, protein and fat metabolism. What does it mean, pro carbohydrate, protein and fat metabolism? Metabolism means the sum total of the chemical reactions going on in the body. So they influence the carbohydrate, protein and fat metabolism. The, cort the cortical hormones, the cortisone, okay? Then secondly, what it does is it regulates the salt water balance in the body. Now next, they adapt the body to extreme heat, cold and infections and there are many more. But just learn so many, okay? Adapt the body to extreme heat, cold and infections. So this is the role of the cortisone or cortical hormones 1, 2 and 3. Now the adrenal gland, this was from the cortex. This was secreted by the cortex of the adrenal gland. Now from the medulla which lies inside, I showed you in the diagram. From the medulla, a hormone is secreted which is called adrenaline, also called epinephrine. Okay, adrenaline or epinephrine. It is called the emergency hormone. Emergency hormone, it is called emergency hormone. Why is it called the emergency hormone? Because this hormone is secreted when a person is under stress. Okay, when a person is under stress and has to face an emergency situation. A situation which has arisen all of a sudden and the person may have to face the situation or run away from it. That's why this hormone prepares the person for a fight or flight. Okay. Now what happens? How does it get, get the person ready? What happens to the heart that time? Okay. Now what does the adrenaline do? It pulls its secretion. Then what happens? Heart starts beating faster, blood pressure increases and more glucose and oxygen is supplied to the muscles and heart starts beating faster, it starts thumping. Okay, now next, arterioles of the skin and digestive system, they constrict, that means constrict meaning they become small, less blood is supplied to the skin and digestive system and more to the muscles because the person may have to fight or run away. So that's why more blood is supplied to the muscles. Then muscles of the body, they tense up, they become tensed and they are ready for action. 
tense feeling and shivering. The person starts feeling tense and starts shivering. But this is all due to the action of adrenaline. It is just getting the person ready for whatever situation the person has to face. Next, what happens to the liver? In the liver, the glycogen converts to glucose. Glycogen, it is stored in the liver. Extra glucose is always stored as glycogen in the liver. But in times of emergency, what the adrenaline does, it converts the glycogen to glucose. And this glucose, when it is, uh, when it is, uh, say, it enters the bloodstream or the when it enters the blood it gives the person extra energy okay it supplies the person with extra energy next breathing center of the brain faster and deeper breathing okay the person starts breathing faster and the breathing becomes deeper increase oxygenation of blood and removal of carbon dioxide the person when when the person starts breathing faster and deeper the person starts getting more oxygen into his into his system okay the blood takes in more oxygen and there is removal of carbon dioxide so this is what the em emergency hormone does okay now we come to the next endocrine gland that is the pancreas this is the pancreas okay just behind actually it is behind the stomach now the pancreas situated behind the stomach okay it has a cluster of hormone producing cells there are many cells on top of the pancreas they produce hormones, okay? Now, these cells that produce hormones, they are called islets of Langerhans. Hormone-producing cells, islets of Langerhans. What are the hormones they produce? One is insulin and the other one is glucagon. So, islets of Langerhans, they produce two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Now, what does insulin does? Uh, what does insulin do? It lowers the glucose from the blood in three ways. Three ways. It decreases the level of glucose from the blood. Okay, lowers it. Now first, glucose is converted into glycogen. And it is stored in the liver and muscles. Okay, this is what insulin is doing. Okay, now its functions. Secondly, induces cells to burn extra glucose to produce heat and energy for the body. Is that clear? So this is the second thing it does. Okay, induces cells to burn extra glucose to produce heat and energy for the body. The third thing, what it does is, the cells, it helps, it stimulates the cells to convert glucose into fat. So these are the three things insulin does. Okay, the hormone insulin, that's how it helps the body. Now the insulin Sometimes it may not be sufficient. The secretion in the body may not be sufficient. It may be insufficient secretion. So there is under secretion sometimes. And sometimes there is over secretion of insulin in the body. So what happens? Let's see. When there is insufficient secretion or under secretion in the body, the person suffers from diabetes or diabetes mellitus because there won't be so much of insulin insulin to convert it to convert glucose 
to glycogen okay so lots of sugar will be there in the blood so the person will suffer from diabetes mellitus because there's not sufficient insulin in the body now that leads to hyperglycemia it is called too much of sugar in the blood okay high, now high sugar in the blood what does what happens then when there is high sugar hyperglycemia excretes urine loaded with sugar people suffering from diabetes they excrete urine loaded with sugar okay feels thirsty because of loss of water through too much of urination because the person will be undergoing uh, too much of urination so the person will also feel thirsty most of the time loses weight and becomes weak the person uh, loses weight and becomes very very weak okay in certain cases loses vision or eyesight okay so this can happen with when there is insufficient secretion of insulin okay now diabetes is also called hyperglycemia hyper means what when the prefix hyper is there means too much anything too much is hyper but over here it is too much sugar glycemia okay too much sugar in the blood now next one over secretion of that was under secretion now this is over secretion of insulin say there is over secretion what happens hypoglycemia that means less amount of sugar in the blood now this is also dangerous okay what happens if there is hypoglyc uh, hypoglycemia if it is not checked in time the person can uh, slip into coma okay if a per if a diabetic person is given overdose of insulin sometimes you know from outside insulin is supplied to people who suffer from diabetes but if there's overdose of insulin then the patient may become unconscious and that is called insulin shock okay becomes unconscious okay because there's too much of insulin in the body okay if there is too much of insulin what will happen the sugar level will at once go down it will convert all the sugar into glycogen okay there will be no sugar left so that is also dangerous and that is called hypoglycemia and that the person suffers from insulin shock so what we've done is the hormone produced by the islets of langer hans the two hormones insulin we finished with insulin now the next hormone is glucagon okay now what does glucagon do this hormone which is also secreted by the islets of langer langer hans it stimulates the breakdown of glycogen where is the glycogen in the liver it breaks down the uh, glycogen in the liver and converts it into glucose when this glucose enters the blood it raises the blood sugar okay now in times of emergency when it is needed this is what glucagon also does it converts the glycogen in the liver and it uh, the glycogen is converted into glucose and then it enters the blood stream and the blood sugar rises thank you